Give it 20 more seconds, I think. Well, uh, welcome to evening prayer once again on this uh, third day of Easter. Um, I think it's quite easy, isn't it, uh, s as soon as Easter day is done with, for us to lose sight slightly of, of that that hope and that joy of Easter. But in fact, especially during this uh, octave of, of Easter, these next eight days up to low Sunday, but also beyond actually Easter tide is 50 days and so really we should try and uh, keep that hope and that joy alive for at least 50 days. Uh, our psalm today certainly helps with that. We have a, a litany of praise of God. Uh, it praises uh, uh, God for creation, for the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt, and for us Christians, it's perhaps useful as well to spend this time contemplating the, the praise of Jesus Christ for that hope that is born out of the resurrection, which we celebrated on Easter Day and continue to celebrate for the next 50 days. So if you happen to be joining for the first time uh, and you'd like to follow the text along, there are three options. If you own a Common Worship Daily Prayer Red Book, well, you probably know where to find uh, evening prayer for Easter season, and uh, you can use that. If you own a smartphone, you can download the Church of England's Daily Prayer app and follow along on that, and that will give you the correct readings. Or you can go onto a search engine and uh, search for Church of England Daily Prayer, Take the first result from the Church of England and uh, away you go with contemporary evening prayer for Tuesday. So let us now just take a brief moment of pause before we begin. Rejoice, O Queen of Heaven, Alleluia. He whom thou wast meet to bear, Alleluia. As he promised, hath arisen, Alleluia. Pour for us to God your prayer, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. Because the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son has brought joy to the whole world, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may lay hold of the joys of eternal life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 136. If you'd like to follow along, I'll give you a brief moment. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. 
who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever, who laid out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever, who made the great lights, for his mercy endures forever, the sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever, the moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures forever, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, for his mercy endures forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever, with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever, who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever, but Pharaoh and his host he overthrew in the Red Sea. For his mercy endures forever, who led his people through the wilderness. For his mercy endures forever, who smote great kings. For his mercy endures forever, and slew mighty kings. For his mercy endures forever, Sihon king of the Amorites. For his mercy endures forever, and Og the king of Bashan. For his mercy endures forever, and gave away their land for a heritage. For his mercy endures forever, a heritage for Israel his servant. For his mercy endures forever, who remembered us when we were in trouble. For his mercy endures forever, and delivered us from our enemies. For his mercy endures forever, who gives food to all creatures. For his mercy endures forever, give thanks to the God of heaven. For his mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the second chapter of the Song of Solomon, beginning at the eighth verse. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice, my beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the, co in the covert, covert of the cliff, let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch us, the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine and I am his. He pastures his flock among the lilies until the day breathes and the shadows flee. Turn, my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag on the cleft mountains. Here ends our first reading. God raised Christ from the dead, the lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. 
so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Our second reading is taken from the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they, that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but then when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words, words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Here ends the second reading. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. And so in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. In the year's mind of the parish church, today we are asked to pray for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Kirby. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day, we continue to pray for all those who are ill at this time. And we very much continue to pray for the selfless and compassionate actions of those on the front line caring for those most acutely ill with this virus. We pray for all of those who are researching this virus and we pray for their continued work towards new treatments. We pray for all of those who are jobless as a result of recent events. And we pray for solutions and help with financial instability. And we pray for those who are struggling generally with life at this time. 
And we pray that the hope of Easter, that hope of the resurrection, may be in the hearts of all God's people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a time of uh, reflection now, we bring before God all the events of today. Um, for all those sadnesses and all those difficulties where we might have felt distant from God, for all those moments in which, out of anger or anything else, we may have felt the need to say sorry to God. And uh, following our psalm of praise uh, today, we also look for all those things for which God can be praised from little to great things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, we pray and remember all those that have died this day and for all those that will die this night. And so we pray together, rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And so uh, I thank you all for joining again. Uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and God bless. <laughs>